If you saw Cocaine Cowboy in, in Netflix, you see there was a big operation in Miami called Operation Video Canary. Mm -hmm. Operation Video Canary, they arrested every drug dealer that there was in Miami, right? They were all selling Graham Townsend, like Sean Woolley, who literally, like the producer said, I handed him, or the prosecutor said, I handed him the keys to the kingdom. They were selling Grahams at a disco for years. My name never came up, and I was bringing in 800 kilos for two years. 800 kilos? A month. I was making a million to $3 million a month. We were doing anywhere between 50 and $80 million a month, almost a billion a year in 1977, 78, money. It's a lot, of, a lot of money back then. What is life like at that time? Well, needless to say, you know, it's like, like the young athletes that signed the big country and they've been they broke all their lives. I was the same, no different, right? But I invested a lot. But I bought jets, mansions, Rolls Royces. Uh, I had every known car you can imagine. And I dated some of the most beautiful women in America. And I said, and, I, and I, I wrote a blog that I said, I'm 22 years old. I make a million dollars a month. I have mansions, jets, helicopters, million dollar car, and I want to die. And I want to die. And saying that's the message that I wanted to get across to a lot of people. And I think they did a really good job in Cocaine Cowboys because the thing about it is, see, Patrick, I thought that once I reach my American dream, which is not what the American dream is, mm -hmm. the American dream is the World War II generation. They'll work their butts off to have a job in a decent retirement, one house. Uh, they had marriage problem, but divorce was not an option. You know, they hated the war like all of us. Serving was an honor. They'd rather be an hour early than a minute late. That's the American dream. Our American dream is just a false. It's the fact that you, you have this hunger within you and society is quick to tell you, listen, when you do this, you're going to be happy. When you date this gorgeous model, look at it on TV. Well, listen, I woke up next to them. They don't look the same in the magazine as they do when they wake up out of bed. You're supposed to be happy. Everybody's telling you you're God. You know, you did a video that I liked a lot when you talk about how people are constantly wanting people to like them, you know? And it's interesting that we live in a world that that video you didn't get as many views as some of the other <laughs> mafia videos, when that video had unbelievable message. Yeah. To me, it did. Because it's so true, right? We're constantly wanting people to praise us. We want, why? Because we're miserable. And we need affirmation. See, and instead of people saying to me, listen, George, you're the scum of the earth. No, it, it didn't matter you're what amazing. I did. You're, you're so, you know, you're the best to hang out with. You're this, you're that. So at that time, when you're making a million to three million a, a month, and you guys are doing a bill a year, uh, what does your mom and dad think you're doing? So see, that's the thing. My mom did not have no idea what I was doing. Did they ever come to your mansion? They did thought, they get on the well, jets? No, they, oh yeah. But they thought that I was a legitimate businessman because we had, we had cattle farms. We had business that they could see. We had construction company. I, I took my father to Columbia a couple of times to see uh, the house that I bought, which was a big old development that we have built. So they saw all that, and this is, the, this is where the problem comes with Sal and Willie. So my dad is best friends with them, with his father, forever, since Cuba. Uh, every day after dinner, till they all died, they would visit each other's house for coffee. Mm -hmm. To me, they were like my parents, loved them to death. Well, so Sal, uh, I lost uh, track with Sal because he, they dropped out of high school. I kept on going to college. And every time my dad went to his parents' house, he was like, hey, tell George to give me a chance. Tell George to give me Because, of course, my dad, being a typical Hispanic, he's bragging about his son, how his son is doing so well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how his son is driving a road, you know, all of this stuff, not knowing really what his son was doing. So I was afraid they were going to tell my dad when I give him a meeting. You know, I was afraid that, hey, you know, let me talk to him because sooner or later he's going to spill it. And then, you know, my parents, it would destroy my parents, which eventually it did. And it's the greatest regret of the many regrets that I have. You know, people tell, tell me, it's like, don't you miss that life? Well, you have a jet? I don't. I sure as hell miss mine. Of course you miss it. You miss the thing. I don't miss it. Tell me, hey, do you miss having a 747? No, I never had one, so I don't miss You miss the thing that you had. 
But the thing is that none of that gave me the joy that I have today because today my joy is not in that thing. My joy is in me and who I am and who created me. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.